All right, I gotta make this fast because this is gonna be the second video of the day. But, you know, also I'm fucking exhausted. It's been a day and a half already. Like, fucking tried to get a lot done today. And I did get a lot done today. Um, but I'm gonna get up like early ish tomorrow and see if I can get even more done tomorrow. I'm going to go to sleep a little earlier as well, because um, I got to I gotta get, like, a shit ton of shit done tomorrow. Um, but, uh, basically, there's, uh, there's this question I've gotten before, and I think it's a valuable question to sort of go over. And, uh, it, it's not as though, you know... I don't sympathize with the kind of thing being asked. But it is fucking frustrating because I know that I contributed to this problem. And what is the problem? Well, let's start off by looking at this window uh, and, and showing you uh, the response to a tweet I posted in a Facebook group. Because that's what started this particular comment, and I think it sort of does kind of address the issue um, on a wider scale, you know? So, this is in a Facebook group. And I posted my, uh, my, my tweet about the Saudi Arabia situation not being as cut and dried as saying, you know, fucking tr Trump bad because Jared Kushner. So I posted my tweet in here, and y'all have already seen it if you saw the other video, but on the off chance that you haven't, because it still is below 100 views, if y'all want to fix that by sharing it uh, and liking and subscribing, it uh, helps me in the algorithm. So... I said it's okay to bring up how Saudi Arabia might influence Jared Kushner. It's not okay to bring up their sovereign wealth fund investing in Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, and more just this year. Or how Awalid bin Talal of the House of Saud used to be Twitter's largest shareholder. Um, the House of Saud is the richest royal family on the planet. And their investments are frequent and ubiquitous. I'm not making any judgments in this thread. Um, but nearly nobody against Jared Kushner for his PIF money is either genuine, consistent, or self-reflective. Facts. And they hate JK because he's related to Trump and most of the people complaining are Team Biden. So it's okay to take money from Saudi Arabia as long as... It's then b buying weapons and fueling the U.S. military and intelligence industrial complex. Biden can't be influenced by five billion? So, Saudi Arabia is participating in genocide. They have a really shit tier um, human rights record, including Jamal Khashoggi. Um, and there's like a fuck ton of things I could list. Now, to be clear, I'm not going to pull some shit-lib move like saying they're somehow exclusively bad because the U.S. is helping them for a reason, and it's because the U.S. is just as fucking bad, if not worse, on a regular basis. And I can say, you know, if not worse, because ultimately, the if not worse component is, um, you know... U.S. tries to make it seem nicer. They try to play it softer with more soft power. Like funding Saudi Arabia and Israel, who not only serve as regional footholds, but also uh, serve their power there. That's why you'll see a social media or other corporation with a Saudi fucking pr uh, profile not using that rainbow during Pride Month not celebrating BLM during Black uh, History Month, because they don't fucking care, and it was never about, you know, 
ethics or morals or solidarity or anything. It was always about profit. And Saudi Arabia has used their, you know, PIF, their S is a sovereign wealth fund, to fund a shit ton of people. And your your thing that you like is probably at least partially resultant of Saudi money. Like, I'm not immune, you know? I use fucking uh, Google sometimes. I obviously have a Facebook, and, you know, I, I could go on. But... That doesn't make it something not worth discussing. And so, you know, I got these standard bullshit of like, oh, oh, just, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to block you, throw away comment. And then Ben actually asks something interesting for once. But only interesting because I think I can answer it in an interesting fashion, because I've heard this kind of thing a lot. And that's the reason I wanted to answer it in a video form, so that there's some sort of cohesive answer to this sort of thing in the future. What should we do about it? I say we start voting for people in a direction to start incremental changes in our system that might make things better in the future. I disagreed with a lot of what he was about, but I voted for McCain because he said he was about campaign finance reform. Okay, so, Ben has had a habit of mocking me before and not really engaging in any sort of good faith or serious discussion, but this was an effort and an actual request for a solution. So, here's the thing. I blackpill people a lot. I am an extremely negative person. And I think I'm negative for a good reason. And, I, like, the primary reason is that when people vote for incremental change, A, that sort of implies that the system is actually going to change jack fucking shit at your request. Imagine the giant fucking behemoth, the blood-soaked evil tyranny that has come up saying, yeah, enough people asked nicely and scribbled on paper. We're going to give it all up. We have millennia of progress on our side, building our structures and making sure that they resist toppling. But we're going to give it up because we believe in the sanctity of the process. I don't see it happening. And then, picture them saying, um, we are going to start to abolish all of these things that help us do what we do. You know, assuming that they even could. Assuming that the system didn't just fucking stop them, right? That would be um, assuming that they could get enough people agreeing with them. And this is like on the same page, right? And it's assuming that those politicians in this, in my opinion, imaginary world where, you know politicians can change things and the system will change because you voted for certain politicians I you know that's assuming that they're honest and that they eventually keep their promises this thread is about Biden versus Trump versus Saudi Arabia and the ubiquity of foreign finance and corruption and general malfeasance that results from the system being the way it is, right? I would argue that that's inherent, but even if it's possible to do this, you have to have an honest politician who, once he's in there, didn't have ulterior motives to get in there, and then 
they have to do what they said they would and have the power to do what they said they would. Biden came in on partially on promises of dealing more harshly with Saudi Arabia than Trump did. But it was never about dealing harshly with Saudi Arabia. It was always about using Saudi Arabia as a political football against Trump. Now, assuming that they're not on the same team, assuming that this isn't one big minstrel show, soap opera kind of reality TV bullshit, and this was a real altercation, because the alternative is that it's just bullshit, and voting wouldn't work anyway because they're all on the same team. I'm trying to be charitable here. Um, assuming that this was legitimate, uh, he specifically promised that he would be harsher on Saudi Arabia and not do deals with them. And what did he do as soon as he had the opportunity? He not only went over there and dealt with them, he fist bumped them. He tried to act cool about it. And then he passed the trying to act cool about it. He tried to pass that off as COVID protection. Oh, sorry, I can't shake your hand. I would spread coolies. Instead, let's do this cool jive. I got my fist out. You got your fist out. We can get fist bump. Ain't we cool and hip? We're the presidents and, uh, and shahs and, and, and Sikhs and all the rulers of the world. And we can just fist bump each other now. I'm going to ride in next time on a skateboard and a backward baseball cap like them kids are doing. It should read as ingenuine because he's ingenuine. It's not fucking real. <laughs> Never was. It wasn't real when he made the promise and it's not real now. That's why voting doesn't work. And then in the end run of it, Let's say you get a little bit of incremental change and then a wave happens. A blue wave or a red wave or any other color of wave. Your increments are fucking destroyed and possibly reversed. And where did all that money that could have gone to directly helping people fucking go? It went to them, yo. It went to making them look awesome, turning them into fucking celebrities. How is that not a colossal waste of time, effort, money, brain power, seconds of your life you will never get back, opportunities you squander? relationships you, 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 you sever or, or that weaken because you support the wrong politician. They're all the wrong politician. Okay? So that's my opinion on the problem with voting as a solution. Because it's fundamentally not going to be. You, you, you can't honestly expect me to believe that voting can fundamentally change a system that can turn a minority from a law-abiding citizen into a criminal thrown up against the wall by one of Mike Bloomberg or Biden's goons. Or, you know, reverse any sort of a Supreme Court decision. and change the entire fabric of a fucking nation? You can't expect me to believe that that one is capable of being incrementally changed by its own mechanisms. And, and here's the fun part, because I know I'm depressing right now, and if you are watching this, Ben, you know, I have more than just this. 
Because it seems like there's an inkling of you that does give a fuck. <sighs> the solution is in the statement of the problem. And that's pretty much true of all problems. You can find the solution if you're willing to look at the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the evil system. The inherently evil system. And that root of that problem can only be corrected once people are willing to use that time, effort, money, seconds of their life that they will never get back to network anarchistically, to form communes, to reach out to the left and the right as long as they're willing to support their fellow man's liberty to do as they please. Anarchy is the only solution to the problem of the mutually assured destruction, inevitable Armageddon state. I see a homeless problem. Instead of telling all my friends to donate to a political action community, uh, committee, I will buy an apartment complex with those donations. And we will give these people apartments. That's a solution. Instead of supporting a politician who will crack down on crime, I will personally build a pool to fund addiction treatment. And not support politicians who keep things in the black market unnecessarily, thus driving people who want simple things like guns and drugs to the black fucking market. You wonder why there's so much crime? Maybe it's because people rely on criminal circles in order to get what they're addicted to. Maybe that's why crime dropped in Portugal, and so did addiction when they started to loosen this shit. Right? The fact that this isn't more obvious... I get it. Because it used to not be obvious to me. I used to be basically fascist in high school. But let me tell ya... After thinking about it for a while and getting influenced by the right people and you know, essays and books and works of fiction like the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, I suddenly realized, hey, I don't have to join the bullies who have been bullying me all my life in order to be accepted. I don't have to join the evil people. I can join the freedom fighters and fight Robotnik, metaphorically speaking, because I'm not going to say something that's going to get my YouTube taken down. That's what I can do. That's what you can do. Direct action, mutual aid, voluntary trade, mutual defense and militias, community organization, trade, Grow food so you don't need to go to a corporation. Build things so that your neighbor can have the things they need. They can fix things when you need them fixed. That sort of thing. Being an actual fucking community again. And not letting corporations and states continue to fund your destruction and tell lies to your children, your friends, and your family. Can we do that? Probably not. Because there aren't enough people who are willing to get on board with something like that. And when you say anarchy, even though it's true and right, they get fucking scared. Because part of the indoctrination they've experienced with the Shkur system the Prussian-imported indoctrinating Schur system 
is that anarchy equals chaos and that anything without a ruler, anything that's voluntary, anything that's accepting of certain things that are currently considered criminal is terrible and verboten. That is unless your government did it in order to found the government. It's always funny to tell people who say that we can't do that sort of thing again, hey, do you hate the founders too? Because they kind of did it already. And we could do it better without the whole, like, owning slaves, treating women like shit, expanding westward and exploiting native populations, doling out the resources from the state so that the winners and losers could consistently be picked across generations. We could do better. So the question is, do you want to do better, or do you want the same shit over and fucking over again until we all lose? Because I gave you the solution, and the alternative is apocalypse. And that's why we need to smash the fucking state.